Okay, so once again, here is our goal for the day that we will be able to identify, draw, and define parallel lines. So by the end of this lesson, you should be able to do all three of those things. Before we get into parallel lines totally, we're going to do a little bit of a review from the last few days. So I want you to take a look at these two figures right here. And I want you to think to yourself, if I were going to write these down using the little symbols that I've been taught, first of all, what are the names of these figures and what, how would I label them? So this first one right here we see has a point on the end and then an arrow that extends forever. So we call those rays. Okay, in this case it is labeled ray, a point with an arrow on the end, ray a b. Okay, so without even writing the word ray, this little symbol right above it means ray. Okay, the next one we see has two lines that go for, two arrows that go on forever and ever in each direction. So that is a line. And to indicate line, we have kind of half arrows on the top and then we indicate it with E, F, the same letters that are on the line. Okay, here are our next two figures. So this one is slightly different than this one. Okay, so we would call this one a line segment because it has the dots in the middle of the line. So a line segment, we just write the line G H. Okay. So line segment G H. Now over here, we have an angle, but more than the angle, I want to know what type of angle is it? There were four different types of angles that we'd learned. And so I'm wondering which type of angle is it? If you said that it's a cute little baby angle, you are right, it is. It is less than 90 degrees, so we call that acute. And we indicate it in one of two ways. We could say angle I, K, J. So angle I, K, J. Or we can say the opposite, angle J, K, I. Either one of those is okay. All right, and then we have two more figures down here that I want you to take a look at. So we have two more angles. So on this angle, what type of angle is that? It's definitely the arrows are opening up. So this inside part right here is much bigger than the inside part up here. And since this was a cute little baby angle, and th that would make this obtuse. An obtuse angle is more than 90 degrees. So we could label it angle LMN. Or we could label it angle NML. Okay, and then finally we have this angle over here. We know that this symbol right here tells us something special. This tells us that it is a right angle. And again, we can indicate that with angle OQP or the opposite way, angle PQ. But then I want to know something else. I want to know how does ray O, or sorry, ray QO, so ray QO, this one right here, how is it related to ray QP? Well, how are they related? Well, if you notice, they meet right here at point Q and they meet at a 90 degree angle. So that means that they are perpendicular to each other. Okay, the next review question that I have for you is, can you draw, oops, that's a little crooked, let's get that up there. Can you draw line RS that is perpendicular to TV, line segment TV? So this is a review from yesterday. Do you remember how to draw those perpendicular lines? So first off, you start with, uh, we're gonna have a line, right? A line, indicate it with my arrows, just like it shows my arrows, and I'm going to label it R, S. Can I make a perpendicular line? How did I make those perpendicular lines yesterday? Well, it was very simple. I took my 90 degree tool, I line 
lined it up right against that line. And then I traced along the edge to create that perfect 90 degree angle. And so since it's a line segment, I want to indicate the end with a line. It meets down here, so I don't indicate, need to indicate with a point down there. And I would label it TB. And then I can make a 90 degree sign right there. And that means that the other side is also 90 degrees. Okay, so let's get into parallel lines for today. Parallel, what are parallel lines? I have some different examples here that we're going to take a look at and determine, are these lines parallel or not? Well, one thing that you should probably remember from your previous grades is that parallel lines go on forever and ever without touching. They never ever cross each other or intersect each other. So kind of like train tracks. Train tracks go on forever and ever and they never cross each other. The same track would never cross itself, right? Because then you would have a crash. So I want you to think to yourself, what are some examples in your bedroom, in your house, um, outside? What are some examples you could think of that also have parallel lines on them? Just real world examples. Like I'm looking outside my window right now and I see a set of monkey bars. Monkey bars kind of look like a ladder, right? And all of those lines, there's lots of sets of parallel lines within them. So there's the two sets of parallel lines that go down the edge of the monkey bars. And then all the other little tiny ones that go like this. So lots of parallel lines because they never cross each other. So let's take a look here. A, B, and C, D, these, like, these two line segments. Now, although in this example, they're not touching yet, if we extended them, and that's the important part you have to think, like just because they're not crossing in this portion, if we did extend them, would they intersect? So I'm just going to kind of use these two things, these two tools to show you how they would intersect. So I'm going to put my 90 degree tool along that line, and then I'm going to use my protractor. And if you notice, eventually my protractor gets onto my 90 degree tool. And so yes, at some point those two would intersect. So these are not an example of parallel lines. Okay, let's take a look down here. I have HI, JK. I can do the same thing. I can line up my 90 degree tool. I can line up my protractor. And if you look, they stay the same distance apart the whole time. They are not getting closer to each other. So these two are parallel to each other. And the way that we um, the way that we indicate that is we would put a little arrow on each of them. So it's saying that this line is parallel to this line. And just like perpendicular lines, when we wrote the code for it and used the symbol up here, we could do the same thing. There's just a different symbol for parallel lines. So we would write line segment H I hi is parallel, right? Parallel lines, little train tracks parallel to line segment J, K. Okay, so that's how we indicate that. All right, we can look here, and again, I wanna do the same thing. I wanna take my um, tool and I want to line it up on there, and then I wanna take my protractor and I want them to line up against each other, and then eventually, you see, right about right here, they, they intersect. And so those are not parallel lines. Let's take a look at this letter N, okay? And granted, it is a little bit crooked because I did handwrite it and I did not use my protractor when I did it, so shame on me. But you might be thinking, Mrs. Fox, that line right there, that line definitely intersects. It's already touching right here and it's already touching right here. And I would say you are 100% correct that that line, that diagonal line there, it does intersect. But what about the other two lines over here? What about those two? So I'm going to take my tools and I'm going to set them up. And like I said, my handwriting wasn't the best. So according to the line I drew, yes. But if I were to print this off of the computer, it would be more straight. And it would actually go straight up and down. So on the letter N, there are a set of parallel lines. This line is parallel to this line. Okay, and so I could just quickly indicate it to show that they are parallel. All right, let's take a look at this rectangle. Okay. Yesterday we learned that rectangles have 
four sets of perpendicular lines, right? Because there are four right angles in a rectangle. And you know what? I bet you're already looking at this and saying, I see, Mrs. Fox, that there are more than one set of parallel angles. And you are 100% right. Okay? So if I look, I could say, hey, A, B, and C, D are parallel to each other. And I could write my little sentence, line segment, A, B, is parallel to line segment C, D. And you are correct, those two are parallel. But what about this line segment and this line segment? They're also parallel. And so when you have two sets of parallel lines within the same shape, you need to indicate them differently. So you don't wanna get confused. So we do that by putting two little arrows on this one and two little arrows on this one. And then we could write our second sentence. So we would say line segment AC is parallel to line segment BD. Okay, so shapes can have more than one set of parallel lines. Some items that you're going to look at in your practice book today are going to have up to three sets of parallel lines that you need to identify for me. Okay, now on to that tricky part. Okay, this is probably the part that you are going to want to pause and really go, huh? Slow down, Mrs. Fox. That's a little confusing for me. So I'm going to do my best to go slow, but if you need to pause at any point, please feel free. Okay, so to construct a parallel line, you want to start off with a line. Okay, so whenever we use our protractor, we hold it down firmly with one arm, hand, whatever, and use your other hand to trace against that line. It shouldn't, if you are doing it properly, you should get a nice straight line. Here, let me show you down here at the bottom what would happen if you weren't holding it straight. Okay, well, it's hard for me to do that because I'm, so, I'm so used to just holding it down, but you see how it curves at the end here and it curves at the end here and it could curve it could even like, oh there, I couldn't even get a little curve because I didn't hold it straight right away. You don't want that. You want it nice and straight like this. So be very careful that you're holding it down firmly, okay? All right, once I have that line, I'm gonna start out the same way that I would with making perpendicular lines and I'm gonna get my 90 degree tool and I'm gonna hold that tool just like I would if I were going to make a perpendicular line. And notice I'm having, I'm holding my, my pencil in between my fingers because I am going to need to use this pencil eventually. And so for me, it's easy to hold it, but you could probably set it down if you wanted to, okay? So unlike perpendicular lines, I'm not going to draw anything yet, okay? Instead, I'm going to use a couple of steps. So I'm going to hold my Hold this down firm. I'm going to get my protractor right lined up, right against that line, just like so. And then I'm not gonna draw anything yet. I'm going to slide that 90 degree tool up just a little bit. I could slide it way up here if I wanted to, but I don't wanna get too far. So I'm gonna slide it up just like this. I'm gonna move my protractor back around because I want that, that parallel line. And then I'm gonna hold it against the other side of my 90 degree angle tool. And then this is the fun part. I finally take away my tool, holding this down so firmly so it does not move. I make my parallel line and then I can indicate it with my arrows. Okay, so the next part of our lesson, you need to get your practice book for. We are going to work in our practice book. And I think that it's the same style as yesterday. You just have to do certain things a certain way. So you are going to, there's three pages today. So in this first part, you are going to trace one pair of parallel lines, lines that appear to be parallel. And I also want you to indicate them with the little arrow marks, okay? So I'm gonna use the notepad because I feel like that's pretty easy and there's lots of parallel lines, but you just need to indicate one set. So I'm just tracing, I'm not using my protractor, although if you wanted to, you could. And then I'm going to indicate that they're parallel by the two arrows on them, okay? So every single one of these has at least one set of parallel lines. I want you to see if you can find them. All right, 
Now, how do you know? So this is being able to, this is identifying the parallel lines, right? This is defining parallel lines. So how do you know if two lines are parallel? Okay, how do you know that? Well, we kind of went over that when we were looking at the examples at the beginning. So two lines are parallel. If, hmm, if what? Two lines are parallel if they never intersect. I had to think for a moment on that. If they never intersect or cross or meet, right? Those are other synonyms for intersect. So you want to make sure that you are doing uh, being able to define that and then down here just like yesterday we have to construct okay so um, that is the third thing in our lesson so um, identify draw so we're going to draw now and define so on this first page we're able to do all of those things so they've given us our line for us so the first thing we're going to start out with is our 90 degree tool okay I'm going to start out here then I put my protractor right up against my 90 degree tool. I slide it down just ever so slightly. I flip my protractor right against that 90 degree tool, remove that tool, and draw my parallel line. And then I'm going to indicate it with my arrows. Okay? When we do this one over here, we're going to indicate it with two arrows. I'm going to get my green marker just so it's a different color for you. I'm going to put my 90 degree tool right along the line. And once you get going on these and you start doing a lot, it becomes a lot faster. At first, it's really slow going, but it, you get faster. Slide up my 90 degree tool, hold it steady, flip my protractor, holding my protractor. Oh, I moved it. I gotta start over. Okay. Holding it steady. Line up my protractor. Slide my tool. Flip it. This is where I messed up last time, so I want to make sure I do it right. Holding it tight. It's hard at this angle. Draw my parallel line. And this time I'm going to indicate these ones with two arrows since they're in the same box. I don't want anyone getting confused and thinking that these two are parallel with these ones because they are clearly not. All right, so your job is to make parallel lines in this box and then in this box. So if you want to pause while you do that right now, that's fine. Or you can come back and do it. So I'm going to move on to the next page of your practice book that's very similar to the one from yesterday. So if you notice, it has the rectangle and they have indicated that line segment AB is parallel to line segment CD. And we know with a rectangle that there's one more set of parallel lines. So I'm going to indicate that with my two arrows. And then I'm going to write my sentence. Line segment AC is parallel to line segment BD. Okay. You're going to go ahead and do that for the rest of them, but I'm going to give you some hints, okay? So I'm going to tell you how many sets of parallel lines there are. And then all you have to do is indicate them with the arrow. So this shape has one, this shape has zero, and there's a question on the next page about this one, so I'm going to keep it hush hush and see if you can figure it out. This one has zero, this one has two, this one has zero, this one has one, two, three, three, and this one has one. Okay, so indicate the lines that are parallel with the little arrows, then write your sentences for each one. So this one will have one sentence, this will have two, this will have three, and this will have one. And finally, on this last page, you just have to answer some questions. True or false, a triangle cannot have sides that are par parallel. Explain your thinking. Well, you should be able to flip back, back and look. 
there are two triangles and I said that neither of those had parallel sides. So true or false, a triangle cannot have sides that are parallel. That is true. Okay. But I want to know why. So I want you to think and be able to tell me why. Okay. And then I want you to explain why AB and CD are par parallel, but EF and GH are not. So explain in words why they are and are not. Okay, and then finally down at the bottom, you're going to use your tool, your 90 degree tool, and your protractor to create a parallel line, set of parallel lines. All right, that uh, concludes our work in our practice book for today.